All right, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva. I am here to do a review of season three, episode two. There are worse things than murder. <laughs> Just kidding. I hope everyone is doing well and has had a great day. I am behind two episodes. As you can see, I am channeling my inner Annalise Keating this season in a um, reddish tone. That wig is everything she rocking this season. And you notice she don't take it off with Nate either because her and Nate been spending a lot of time together. Um... Anyway, I'm filming this in a different location. I was too lazy to go upstairs, so I said I'm just going to sit here at the kitchen table and do it. So, in this episode, there were quite a few things that happened. Connor is out here confessing every damn thing he can, putting everybody in jeopardy to get some woman off. And Frank is setting fire to the rain. Cha. So, when we left off, uh, there is a body under the sheet. Whose body is it? We know it's not Oliver's because he's first on the scene. So the roof, the roof, the roof is still on fire. Annalise is being interviewed by the cops. It seems like they think that she's possibly a suspect. Um, and she's like, what you going to do? What you going to do? You going to lock me up? You going to lock me up? I was like, oh, Annalise, the antics, the antics. She's like, you think I would burn down my old house? oh my god if you go just lock me up just take me away so then we go back to our first flashback of the episode which we seem to stay in this flashback the entire time until the end we open with nate and annalise chilling in bed uh nate Le officer Leahy is showing off all his muscles yes lord amen praise the lord for muscles so he points out that Annalise is having issues like sleeping. And so she tries to make a joke. But we all know what's really going on with her is the fact that she is troubled by all of the things going on with Frank missing and not knowing where he is. Uh, the murders, the bodies are starting to pile up. So she's just really troubled. I'm like, oh, Annalise, your chickens have come home to roost, darling. So Nate B was trying to offer her some good good. And she said, no, nah, because I'm going to be late for work. I said, look at him. Hell, I'd probably be sleeping comatose for another eight hours after that. But okay. Lord, Frank done killed the damn uh, hit man uh, that's supposed to take him out. And he's calling Annalise crying while she trying to get some breakfast in bed. And uh, 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 I was like, what the hell did... What the hell does Annalise do to you people? Wow, she warps your mind. So, uh, some kind of way, I guess for whatever reason, the dean's office decides to call her. Annalise is in the office with the dean, and I guess this is the board president or whatever. They tell her, you know, don't worry about it. You know, with all of this going on on campus, we looking out for your best interest. Um, you know, we're beefing up security and doing drills and all kinds of stuff, and I'm just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. So then she comes out the president's office, runs into West. West like, oh, hey, you're coming out the president's office. Um, is it about them flyers? And I'm like, why are you asking it like that, West? What do you know about the flyers? Is it you setting up the flyers, or is that suspicious new girlfriend of yours, Maggie? Because who really does call themselves Maggie? Maybe Maggie, but not Maggie. Is her name Megan? What's going on? What's up with old girl? So... That's when Annalise, you can tell, is shook because she says, hey, do you want to come live with me, stay with me for a while? I mean, you still live in that crappy apartment. Don't you want to get out? I was like, shit, I wish somebody would offer to let me move in with them. Is the rent free? Because if it's free, I would totally take it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I ain't turned down a good house. Just as long as you don't kill me, Annalise, I'll move in with you. Plus, she already done offered a damn bar to Michaela. I was like, I, I like this Professor Keating. Yes. The puppy declines because he has Maggie, and I guess he feels some type of way. Like, it would be odd being at my professor's house with my woman, and we knocking boots. When he tells her that it's because of Maggie that he can't come, uh, she's kind of like, oh, you're still with that. You're, oh, I thought that. Oh, that's still a thing. I was like, damn, rest. No one believes in your relationship, dude. Well, Bonnie and Laurel 
Uh, nothing but contention for Laurel. Uh, Bonnie, for some reason, does not like Laurel. Maybe something happened at the end of last season, because y'all know I didn't watch all last season. Apparently, I was half comatose watching these episodes. I don't remember much. But Bonnie was slamming them boxes and slanging them boxes. I was like, are you mad because you the clean-up woman? What's, what's going on, girl? That you Take pride in your work, Bonnie. Take pride in your work. Uh, so Laurel comes in and asks about Wes's dad's murder and that she's so concerned and is Frank a suspect. Bunny shares with her that don't worry about it. Eve, y'all know, Jean Grey is on it. Um, Annalise comes in and asks what's up, but she knows something is up. So she kind of doesn't like really inquire because she got her own problems because then she pooch on upstairs and, um, freaking take the burner phone and just stomp the dog shit out of it. I was like, damn, what did the phone ever do to you, Annalise? Oh, my God. Good thing you didn't apply for medical school. First rule, do no harm. Amen. Meanwhile, Frank is over here um, setting fire to the rain, letting it burn. First of all, I thought Frank had gotten into a car accident because he slams the car into this tree. He gets out. Ugh. Oh, look at all mangled and disfigured and stuff. And I'm like, oh, God, Frank. Oh. Baby, he popped that trunk. That hitman that came to get him is in there. He dead to the damn uh, trunk space, okay? He take him out and he sets fire. And it's like, burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno. Burn, baby, burn. Oh, okay, I'm can, can I say it one more time? I set fire to the rain. Let it burn. So, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just, I was all into it. I got a little crazy. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but either way, Frank does set fire to that shit and it's over. And, and I, that's, I guess that, that, that rules out the fact that the body in the house is the hitman. Because that was my first theory last week that Frank had thrown the body in the house and was like, fuck you, Annalise, and I'm burn your shit down. That's what I thought had happened was, but that ain't apparently what's happening. Oliver and Connor, it's over, but they still living together, and Connor trying to move out, and, and, and Oliver working. I, I'm trying to figure out what is wrong with Oliver not wanting to be with Connor. I mean, he has like a disease that most people would run from, but your man is staying with you. What? Is he being blackmailed and we don't know it? Did that boy that kidnapped him do something to him? What, what? Child. Needless to say, they get to the courthouse or, or to class or whatever. Connor shares with them it is so over. And immediately, you know what everyone thinks? What did you do? Connor, did you cheat on Oliver? Oh, my God. We know you did it. And so he's like, no, no, no. It's just over. So either way. They go down here to the legal clinic. They got a new client. Her name is Miss Irene Crowley. Honey, she beat the dog shit out of her husband to death do us part. And she said, we're going to part today with this claw hammer, okay? She beat the shit out of him, okay? Beat him down to the white meat, okay? Hey, Andrea. Hey, Audrey. I see you guys have joined. Oh, you're driving home, so you're going to listen to my summary, Andrea. Good. I need more audience members. Awesome. Just as long as you arrive home safe, Andrea, I'm glad. So this woman murdered her husband. She's been up for parole six different times. Each time they've turned her down. She tells the legal clinic students that each of you are going to get a one minute session with her and then we will determine who is going to represent her before the parole board. Okay. So the Keating Five and other um, law students get a turn with her, but she doesn't like any of them at all okay the only one she liked was connor wash which is surprising and no one thinks this case is winnable as a matter of fact what was even more funny is when asher went in there and she told him baby you look like my husband so you might want to get out okay basically i was like girl ch ch she had a claw hammer she probably would claw at you too so she's a very honorary, stubborn woman hiding secrets and, and really doesn't want to talk about it because I think that as with all women that are victims of, do not all, but let me say as with some victims of domestic violence, you know that you have been living in secret shame for so long and when you finally do tell people the truth about what's going on, 
people don't want to believe you because you've never said anything. So that's it. Connor gets the client. No one thinks it's winnable. I was like, wow, y'all should be overly ambitious. I mean, especially Michaela, miss. I know every case all in the book that was ever written. Wes and Annalise, he asks her when he comes, uh, comes by again if the reason why she asked him to move in is because you afraid of the flyers and Frank and, and, and that maybe Frank will come after me and try to pin my dad's murder on me, which is Mahoney. They say Mahoney, but that was his dad. And Annalise seemingly, and I, I say seemingly, has a moment of weakness when she seems vulnerable and tells him, well, the truth of the matter is I wanted you to move in because I'm lonely and I'm tired of being by myself. <sighs> But I was like, ain't Nate staying with you most of the time? How you lonely? So maybe it's the puppy under the blanket. I don't know. So she finally goes over to Nate's house and tells him what's going on. She asks him to help her find Frank. He says, in the meantime, in between time, I'm going to move in with you and I'm going to be your bodyguard. I don't need a bodyguard. Well, you got one now. I was like, girl, he could guard my body anytime. You know what I'm saying? Um... Because he was like, well, you know, Frank been to prison and um, Sam was his doctor while he was in prison. Did this come out last season? Y'all know I had watched last season. I'm so sorry. Uh, Nate was like, huh, whatever. So you let him set, set me up for Sam's murder but to take the fall, but you not scared of him. I don't get that, Annalise. I don't get it either. Shit. What a tangled web Miss Annalise Keating has weaved for herself. Um, Maggie and Wes. Okay, let's just talk about them real quick. I just want to know if Maggie is putting up the flies because now she acting like she all concerned. I also wonder, is Maggie related to the President Hargrove? Okay, I want to know that too. They kind of look alike like they could be mother and daughter or sister or cousin or somebody. I don't know, auntie. She's awfully concerned about Annalise. Maybe she is concerned about Wes's well-being and working with a woman whose head is a target. I don't know. Um... She don't want to eat the dessert that uh, Wes has scooped out of the Ben and Jerry's uh, ice cream bin. Shout out to Ben and Jerry's. Um, so he tells her to close her eyes and open her mouth. I was like, I don't know if I want to do that, girl, because it might not be some cold going in there. It might be like a hot piece of coal. I don't know. Either way, let me stop. That is so wrong. No one wants to help Connor with his case. They are acting like they are in a back-to-school episode with Mark Harmon. The sister, uh, Amber, comes to every damn parole hearing because she wants to protect the, the legacy of her brother. But we later on learn her brother was one low-down, dirty bastard that was beating his wife every day. And she did what she had to do to get away. Asher and Michaela, Lord, child, um... Asher wants to go public with this relationship of theirs, uh, but Michaela is like, no, you just want to go public so you can say you've been with a black woman. You ain't never touched black skin a day in your life. And so basically, it's all about race relations. They can relate to one another in the sheets, but not on the street. Mm-hmm. There's a conversation about Laurel and the fact that Laurel been creeping around. Calling Frank. In some kind of way, I think it was Bonnie or somebody got her phone records. And that's when they discovered that she had been calling Frank. But turns out these are, we all know they're just all voicemails. And that's when Annalise goes, every, I hate every last one of them bitch ass lying faces. I was like, damn, Annalise, they done helped you. They done shot you. They done helped you cover up several murders. I mean, child, they loyal. Laurel is loyal. Except for in the next episode, but we'll talk about that in, in, in that review. I think that Bonnie is willing to kill Laurel because she said, don't worry, I'll take care of her. I was like, oh shit, is it Laurel in the sheet? Later on, I'll fast forward and wrap this storyline up. Bonnie and Laurel get together for beer and pool. Uh, she learns from Laurel that Laurel has only been calling Frank. And Bonnie tells her, you need to forget all about Frank. Frank don't give a damn about us. And you just need to you just need to let him go. During that time, she learns and Elise learns from Nate that uh, even though Nate says that he found Frank, turns out he's using some sort of complicated system that allows you to bounce your IP address all around so it looks like you're somewhere, but you're really not. And so then later on, 
they find out that um, Frank could be anywhere, basically. Okay, so after they found out about the fake IP dresses, that's when Nate tells her he's going to move in. They have Laurel call Frank and leave Frank a message that says that Bonnie and Annalise are not mad at you. They want you to come back. I love you. We love you. Come home, Frankie, baby. Come home. I'm pretty sure Frank is not stupid. It's not like he hasn't worked with you guys before. So I don't know what y'all setting him up for. But Frank ain't coming back home. Frank gone. Frank might pop up on you. But you ain't gonna pop up on Frankie, baby. Okay? Um, Irene Crowley is a woman scorned, bitter, and, and, and basically is a martyr. Um, they ask her how her and Rodney met, who is her dead husband, who she murdered brutally. She said, she's very matter of fact about it. She was like, he picked me up in a bar. He knocked me up. The baby died in my body. Like, okay, what happened in between? Um, did he beat you? Is that how you lost the baby? She didn't say none of that. She was just like, the baby dead. And then Connor started trying to speak for her. The parole board tries to tell him to shut the hell up. And Elise tries to wheel him in. But he is zealously representing his client, okay? And so the parole board is like, well, why don't you tell us if you were a victim of domestic violence? Now that the laws have changed in favor of the victim, you might as well tell us what really happened. And so Irene, kind of like how I feel some days, like, y'all pray for me. Um, she was like, basically, whatever I tell you, you're going to believe whatever you want to believe about me. So I don't even know why I'm wasting my time talking to you people. I was like, damn, she gave up. She just, it's like, it's whatever. So next thing you know, Connor just gets vicious with it. And they have to call a recess because he is all out of order. So in order to get Irene to do what it is he needs for her to do so that he can effectively assist her, is that he basically starts his confessions. Okay, Irene, these are my confessions. I killed somebody too and I got away with it. But, uh... You're going to be all right because you're going to tell your truth and you're going to get it. We're going to get you out of here, girl. Oh, my God. Connor, why are you telling all your business? But either way, Annalise caught him. She upset, but she said, you better hope this shit works. So when they get back in there, it works. That's when she tells everything. She was like, I laid in wait for him to come in. And when he came in, I hit him over and over and over again with this claw hammer and I just beat him until it was down to the white until brain showed I was like damn girl you beat him down to the white meat then she said I didn't think it was enough because um yeah so I beat him some more I was like damn she said no one ever asked me why there were no doors in our house you know why there were no doors in our house because I couldn't have a place to hide to get away from him when he was beating me. Do you know I almost drowned in my own urine? Did you know that? Yeah, he tried to drown me. I had just finished using the bathroom, and then he tried to drown me in my own urine. Yeah, and, some t and one time he raped me with the hose. Oh, I have a host of stories. I can tell you so much. I said, damn, that... <sighs> Lord, you just never know what people go through. As they were like, they found it hard to believe that she just murdered him when he didn't present an intimate threat. And she was like, but it wasn't a matter of him being a threat then. It's about he was going to beat me for the rest of my life. And I knew the only way I was ever going to get away, get free was to kill him. And that's what I did. And after I killed him, I fell free. I said, damn, but she locked up like a caged bird. But she feels freer knowing that that scumbag is deceased. Annalise does approach the sister in the restroom and convinces her that it's best for her not to talk because she knows for a fact that her brother used to beat on her too. So she does it and Irene gets free and it's like, oh my God, it worked. Yay. Wes and Laurel talk about the fact that both of them had done background checks on Maggie and that Laurel needs to chill out because... He doesn't want any problems created when there are none. Then this is where it gets really interesting, which is why I said maybe it's the president or the board president that's under the sheet in this house. Because she goes, they call a meeting because what happened is that Laurel had tried to tell everybody, have y'all seen the papers? Because Anna Lee's story about um, 
her being a killer has now made the news publications. And that new smart Alec kid, I don't know what his name is, Drake or somebody made the statement, well, who's to say that Annalise ain't doing it herself for attention? I could see her doing something like that. I'm like, all right, you're going to be under the sheet next. And so I guess it's gotten to be too much. Of course, you know how it is. When schools depend on donations from alumni and donors, they get scared when people start talking about reeling in them pocketbooks and checks, okay? And leaving them gifts when they die, okay? So they said that, well, you know, given the climate and the crises and because this has made the newspaper, uh, we're going to suspend you. And Annalise was like, them two don't go together. I'm the victim. And uh, you going to suspend me when there's some psycho trying to kill me. Lock me up my classroom if you want to. But I'm going to show you, honey. Can you see this news headline? Prominent attorney persecuted by elite university. Plus the million dollar lawsuit. I'm going to drop on y'all. Say, oh, come on through, sister. Let them know. Don't let them push you over. Okay. Okay. Today is not the day. And at least did not come to play. She came to slay. Okay. So, uh, I guess she told y'all, so y'all, everybody was sitting there like, we better all get information, otherwise we ain't gonna have no money when Annalise get done suing us. I was like, baby, you don't mess with a sister like that. Not one with a brain, because y'all came for checkers. She played chess. So, Oliver and Connor. I think Con I think somebody must be blackmailing Connor to leave. I mean, must be blackmailing Oliver to leave Connor alone. Cause I don't know. So it, it it's cause Connor. Yeah, I just need to be alone. I just need to be alone. Oh, oh God. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Like, why don't you just confess what's really going on here? Because you have a great relationship and now. You don't want it. Is it because you really you really don't think you two can work together with Annalise? I mean, what's what what's going on here? So then Connor brokenhearted goes over to Michaela's house and guess who's there at Michaela's house? Chow Asher getting him some chocolate goodies. They tell Connor and Connor is so brokenhearted and out of it, he don't even care. He's just like, whatever. I think they probably all knew y'all were together anyway, so what difference does it make? Flash forward, we know Oliver is not under the sheet, because at first I thought it was him that they would have set up to get killed by Annalise or somebody. So she hands him the phone and tells him, wipe it clean. And then that's when they place her under arrest, and now we're like, whose body is in the house? Whose body? Bonnie said there's worse things than my murder, Laurel. So, uh, did the people accidentally get burned up in the house? Was Annalise burning up the house for insurance money and didn't know that two people were stowaways in her basement or somewhere in her attic? I mean, let's ask those questions. My money, personally, is on the school president. I could see her murdering her. Or the board president. I don't know. Y'all tell me who y'all think is under the sheet. At Annalise Keaton's burning house. That's all I've got for this episode.